In 2012, Melissa Amarello stunned everyone with a study showing that rattlesnakes form special bonds against all the warnings she was brave enough to call them friends. Was this a mistake? The overwhelming narrative is that snakes operate solo as instinctual machines. Thinking of them as having friends is weird. And if snakes have friends, does this also mean that snakes have feelings? The video she filmed as part of her research blew my mind. I'm going to show it to you a little later. But for context, we have to look a little deeper into the treacherous field of animal emotions. Charles Darwin is best known for his theory of evolution by natural selection. But most people don't know that he's also credited as being the first scientist to give serious attention to the study of animal emotions. Darwin didn't see humans dangling in empty space like an alien separate from all other organisms. He argued that there is a continuity in the cognitive and emotional lives of all animals and that there are transitional stages between species, not big gaps. He collected animal behavior observations over many decades. Their heroic sacrifices of social intakes, the tender bond of affection between female apes and their offspring. And while their roots are instinctive sympathy, Darwin didn't see moral behavior as purely automatic or unconscious. Animals had minds. Darwin's theory was condemned by the Times for undermining the foundations of social order. At the time, animal behavior researchers tried to emulate them but couldn't hang on as feelings can't be directly observed, measured and verified. So the scientists turned their focus to external behavior, the actions that could be seen and to science and in turn the public, animals lost their minds. If a dog jumps up and down and wags its tail, what's happening? To a behaviorist, all behavior can be explained by conditioning and reinforcement. Internal states like thoughts and tensions or emotions are either minimized or rejected completely. The pervasive view is that animals or robots that become conditioned to respond automatically to a stimulus. So if I want my dog to sit, beg or roll over, I can reinforce this behavior with a treat. In other words, I can create this behavior with a stimulus and by rewarding the response. This view of animals as biological machines explains so much about what they do that it's easy for us to adopt. It also makes us feel special and separate from and above animals. But there's a problem. Humans also learn through conditioning. We use it to teach our children and form habits. Yet, I experienced far more than this. And unless there was a miracle that left only humans subject to all the same biological processes except the internal mind, then perhaps animals too have the same type of emotions and cognition as Darwin believed. Could it be that dogs feel joy? In contrast to the behaviorists, research from fields of pathology, neurobiology, endocrinology, psychology and philosophy continue to provide compelling evidence that many animals experience such emotions as joy, fear, love, despair and even grief. It's hard to watch animals like elephants, dogs, chimpanzees and not imagine that they feel strong emotions. Their emotional states are easily recognizable in their faces and their body language. But when it comes to animals like snakes, this familiarity breaks down. They move differently and show no facial emotion. Even though a lion is far more deadly than a snake, we tend to like lions because we see more of ourselves in them and dislike snakes as they apparently reflect nothing of us. But what if we dig a little deeper? Researchers have categorized our feelings into primary and secondary emotions. Primary emotions are the instinctive fight or flight feelings that all vertebrates experience in the face of danger. Snakes perform many primary fear responses such as avoiding animals, using their camouflage to hide, hooding, hissing, and even spitting venom as an instinctive reaction to danger. And as there's no room for error in the face of a danger stimulus, they don't have to recognize the object that stimulates this reaction. The snake calms down if you stand still because its fear response is generated by movement without needing to recognize the object. The very same primary fear response in the snake is operating in us. And just as there's no room for error in the face of danger for the snake, we understandably see all snakes and all snake behavior is a threat to our survival. And what might look like aggression is actually fear and a reactive response 
needed for survival. Secondary emotions are those that are experienced or felt, evaluated and reflected on. Although most emotional responses appear to be generated unconsciously, consciousness allows an individual to make connections between feelings and action. So the big question that we're trying to answer here is do snakes feel these secondary emotions? We just have to ask the right questions. As we continue in the spirit of Darwin and open our minds to the possibility that emotions and feelings can extend in varying degrees throughout all animal life, we discover more and more evidence of animals with deep, rich and complex emotional lives. As the field of study deepens, the word friend is being used and accepted more. Using methods borrowed from social studies on elephants and baboons, Melissa analyzed the interactions of non-mating snakes and what she found stunned everybody. The snakes recognize each other and actively make choices about who to hang out with and who to avoid. Rattlesnakes retreat to communal dens in the winter and rely on each other for warmth, but these snakes were hanging out like well past the time needed for additional winter warmth, or even outside of the mating season. These were not mating relationships, but special connections with each other. In other words, friends. Morgan Skinner confirmed this in a lab with his study on garter snakes. The snake returned to their original groups of three to eight individuals inside the small shelters and sought out specific snakes that they had hung out with before. One problem that plagues emotional studies is that minds are private entities. I don't have direct access to your mind, so even if you tell me how you feel, there is no way for me to know if how you experience joy is the same way that I experience joy. This difficulty increases when we try to understand animals, even if they could speak. Our conceptual frameworks of the world would be so different that we couldn't understand their perspective. But this doesn't mean we should close ourselves off to the possibilities. As tool use was once thought to be exclusively human, the wall of feelings and emotions that has separated us from other animals is eroding away. It's important that we don't project our emotions onto animals and rather try to enter their world and imagine what it's like to be them from their perspective. Gordon Burghardt of the University of Tennessee said it best, snakes aren't all cryptic learners but have more social intelligence and a larger social repertoire than most of us realize. But if you or somebody you know are afraid of snakes, then it's definitely good to be aware of the primary fear response chain reaction that we spoke about earlier. A snake will never attack without being provoked.